We often get questions from new and experienced well owners about how and when to disinfect your well. Now, you should be doing regular water quality checks, and that will tell you if you need to disinfect your well, if there's bacteria such as chloroform present. Also, if you have iron bacteria in the well, it might also be a good time to disinfect and get rid of all of that. Most of the time, you won't have to disinfect your well more than once a year, even if that. But you should be doing regular water quality tests in order to ensure you're not getting bacteria into your well. Good news is, if you already have a well pump installed or a solar pump, you're not going to have to pull that pump. We're going to be able to disinfect the well with that pump in, and it even helps the process because we'll be able to add the disinfectant. In this case, it's going to be bleach. We'll pour it down the well. We're going to circulate it through the entire system, allow it to disinfect everything, and then we're going to drain the system and flush it out with nice clean water. In this video, we're going to go over the seven steps in order to disinfect your well. Also, if you like this content, subscribe down below. We're going to be doing a series that's going to show how to replace this old AC pump system with a complete solar pump system with a submersible pump and a surface pump in order to provide water to your entire property. This is Mike with RPS Solar Pumps, and these are the seven steps you need to take in order to disinfect your well and keep your family safe. Put the sun to work with RPS pumps. For step one, we're going to need to purchase some bleach. We're going to be using bleach today because it's nice and easy to acquire and it's very easy to pour down the well. They also make disinfecting pellets for wells, but they're a little bit harder to find and usually need to be ordered. They contain the same substance, which is sodium hypochlorite, which is going to do the disinfecting. In this case, we're using household bleach. Household bleach comes between 6% and 8.5% concentration. In this case, we're using the more common 6%. When you're looking for it, make sure you get an unscented brand so there's no perfume which is going to flavor your water for days to come. A nice unscented one is going to be easy to flush from your system so you don't have any residue. For step two, we're going to calculate how much water is in the well and how much water is contained in our entire system. That's going to determine how much bleach we need to purchase, pour down the well, and then circulate throughout the entire system. So the first part of this is we need to determine how much water is in the well. We need to take our static water level, that's the distance the water is from the top of the well down to the water surface, and the total depth of the well. So we take our total depth minus our static water level, and that's going to provide us the feet of water contained in our well. From there, we need to look at the diameter of the well. That's going to determine the actual volume of water in that many feet of the water column. Now that depends on your casing size. In this case, we have a six inch casing, which equates to 1.5 gallons per foot of water. If you have a three, four, seven, eight, or nine, that's gonna be different than our 1.5. Off to my right, there's an easy to use table, which is going to say what to multiply the feet of water in your well by in order to get the total volume of water in gallons in your well. In our case, we have a six inch well. The static water level is at 30 feet, and the total depth of the well is 190 feet. That's gonna give us 160 feet of water contained within our well. Since it's the six inch casing, we're gonna use a multiplier of 1.5 to give us 195 gallons of water contained within our well. From there, we're gonna calculate the rest of the volume of water contained in the entire property or within your house. So from the well, we want to start looking at the various items that are containing water from the well to the end usage point. The first one is a pressure tank. In our case, we have a rather large pressure tank. It contains around 315 gallons of water. Most of the pressure tanks have a label on it. You'll be able to see how much water they contain. Next, you'll want to count up the number of hot water heaters, if any, you have in our system. In this case, we have one hot water heater, and it contains around 60 gallons of water. So next we're gonna figure out how much water is contained in the pipes from your pressure tank to your house and throughout your house. Now don't worry, this isn't exact math. We've estimated we have about 50 gallons because we're using one inch line. If you're using bigger line, it's probably gonna be a little bit higher. You could double that to 100 gallons, but in general, 50 gallons is a rough approximate and it's gonna work for you. So then we're gonna add this all up. Overall here, we have 195 gallons in the well. 
We have 315 gallons in our pressure tank. We have 60 gallons in our hot water heater. And we have about 50 gallons in the lines bringing that all over the property. That gives us 620 total gallons of water contained in our entire system. What we're gonna do is we're gonna then calculate the volume of bleach needed. That's gonna go down the well, we're gonna circulate it, and then we're gonna run that water to all our various systems and let it sit for a while to make sure the entire property gets disinfected. But first we need to calculate, based on our total volume contained in the system, how much bleach we need to add to the well. Now we wanna achieve a PPM, that's a parts per million, of around 200 in order to properly disinfect everything. The 200 PPM recommendation comes from the Manitoba government website on disinfecting wells. With 6% bleach in one gallon, that's gonna treat around 250 gallons of water. If you have an 8%, you can slightly reduce that, but in general, going a little bit higher is not gonna hurt anything. So with our 630 gallons of total volume of water in our system, we're gonna divide it by 250. That's gonna give us about 2.5 gallons of bleach needed to disinfect our entire system. In this case, since we're doing rough math, we're gonna increase that to three gallons. As I said, a little bit higher is not gonna hurt any. In this case, we're looking to treat any chloroform bacteria, but if you're trying to treat iron bacteria, you're gonna to need to use around two to three times higher concentration in order to help wipe it out and break down some of those particles. So if you're treating a bad case of iron bacteria, so double or triple the value here for bleach volume. For step number three, we wanna prepare in advance. That's because this process is gonna take around 12 hours to complete. So we're gonna fill up a couple of buckets here and make sure we have sufficient water in order to do whatever cleaning, laundry, cooking, or anything else we need. It's a good idea to start this whole process in the evening. So you can take your showers, get everything ready, then start the whole disinfectant process, let it sit overnight while you're sleeping, and then do the flush of the system in the morning. For step four, it's time to start pouring bleach down the well. Now, if you're sensitive to bleach on your skin, then you might wanna wear some gloves and I'm gonna put on some safety glasses because it's just not fun getting bleach in your eyes due to any splashing going on here. You will wanna hose nearby your well and you'll wanna fill up to start two buckets of clean water. One bucket we're gonna save and that's gonna be clean water. You can use that to rinse off your hands or anywhere else you get some bleach. And then at the end of the process, we're gonna use that to rinse the well casing off just to get off any bleach residue on your drop pipe, your wire, and your well casing. The second bucket, we're going to use it to dilute our one gallon of bleach into four gallons of water. That's gonna make it less likely when pouring it down the well that any of the components are gonna get damaged because it's gonna be diluted to a lower level that's not gonna cause any corrosion of your drop pipe, your drop wire, or the pump itself. So let's go ahead, we're gonna pour the bleach into our five gallon bucket with four gallons of water. We're gonna repeat that process of diluting the bleach for each gallon of bleach you're pouring down the well. Just to note, if there's any sort of wire splice or other components near the surface of the well on your drop wire, you might wanna pull those out the best you can or move them off to the side so we're just not pouring bleach directly over them, but in general, it's not an issue. Dilute this gallon of bleach and get it poured down our well. If you have a well seal, you're going to want either a funnel or a homemade funnel in order to put down the vent on the well seal to pour this mixture through. If you have a pitless adapter and a well cap, then it's much easier. You can remove the screws on the top of your well cap and just pour it straight down your well. In our case, we have a well seal, so we're gonna grab our funnel, we're gonna grab our diluted bleach and head over to the well and start pouring it on in. So now that we have the bleach solution poured into our well, we're gonna take our hose and our funnel and we're gonna recirculate the water in the well until we smell bleach from the hose. We're gonna do this for about 15 to 20 minutes 
and that's gonna make sure that bleach solution gets all over your well casing, your drop pipe, anywhere inside that well where the bacteria can hide so we can eliminate it. So we've recirculated for about 20 minutes and now we're gonna do a final rinse with that extra bucket of water. Once again, we're gonna use our funnel, pour the clean water down the well and make sure we get all the residue off the well casing. This is gonna make sure down the line once we flush the entire system, we don't get that chlorine back down and a flavor of chlorine in your well. You could also do this after you do the complete flush, come back to your well, do a rinse out, kind of run a little bit more water, get all that chlorine out of there. For step five, with the bleach solution well circulated throughout the well, we want to now get that mixture throughout the entire property or house to all of the fixtures, all of the appliances, anything in the house that needs disinfecting. So I'm going to start outside, which I already did, and I turned on every hose I could find until I could smell bleach. That means the solution's made it up to that point. Once I smell the bleach, then I shut it off. Next, I'm gonna go inside, and here we have our sink faucet. I'm gonna turn on the cold and the hot, again, until we smell bleach. That's gonna indicate the solution made it up to here. We're gonna shut it off and go to all our other faucets. We're also gonna do the toilets. We're gonna to flush them a few times to get the bleach water circulated through there. And we're also gonna do our dishwasher and our washing machine to make sure we get in every nook and cranny to make sure any bacteria present doesn't get back into the pipes and water supply. So we've got this all taken care of, and now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna wait 12 hours in order to make sure everything is totally disinfected. This is why I like to do it in the evening, because it can sit for 12 hours and people aren't gonna use any water. So let's go ahead, we'll wait the 12 hours, and we'll be back when the time's up. So we let the whole system sit for 12 hours in order to disinfect, and now we're ready to flush the system. Starting outdoors, you're gonna to wanna to turn on all of your hoses and keep the hose running until you no longer smell bleach. That's gonna take a while for the first hose. And in this case, this is where I like to spray it out around the well, just help disinfect that whole area to prevent any further contamination. That first hose is gonna take a while because we need to drain out the pressure tank and refresh it with clean water. Once we stop smelling bleach on that one, then we go to the rest of the outdoor faucets and allow them to flush as well. I'm back indoors here, I've already done that, and now we're gonna do inside. I'm gonna do both the cold and the hot. Again, with the hot water, that's gonna take a while because we need to flush the whole wash hot water tank. A little bit of note if you're on septic. Um, if you're sensitive about your septic system and you're not quite sure, then a lot of people will fill up five gallon buckets and dump those outside to prevent all the bleach water from going into your septic system. In this case, we're gonna let it run into our septic and then after we're all done, we're gonna give it a good flush and then we're gonna treat our septic and introduce the good bacteria back into it. So here we go, we'll let it run. And it's gonna take a while and we're just gonna keep testing the water and seeing if we smell any bleach. And as soon as that bleach is gone, we're gonna go over to the next faucet and flush that one into water. I've already done a couple around here, so this one only took a couple of minutes, but it might take longer if it's your first faucet. The toilet's less important, you can flush that a few times, but that's naturally going to uh, dilute and get all the bleach out of there. Um, you're going to want to do the showers in order to get the bleach out of those lines before somebody jumps in the shower. Uh, same with your dishwasher, and especially your washer. You don't want to put any dark clothes in there and possibly bleach them. If anything, do a batch of whites before to make sure all the bleach is out. But you can see that's a really simple process. We're able to completely flush out our system knowing it's all completely sanitized. So those are seven easy to follow steps in order to disinfect your well and your entire water system on your property. It's gonna provide nice, safe, clean drinking water for you and your family. Now it is important to do periodic tests to ensure no other bacteria is getting into your well. But if you followed those steps, we're gonna end up with nice, clean, drinkable water. This is Mike with RPS Solar Pumps. These steps work for solar pumps, AC pumps, but if you're considering a solar pump, give us a call at 888-637-4493. We're happy to help size you, figure out what's gonna work for your household, and get you set up with a solar pump today.